the 2019 NBA Draft, the New Orleans Pelicans select Zion Williamson. This guy do what we do. We play like we play. We be us. We be special. We smell greatness. We finish strong. Yes, from the top. One, two, where we do, where we go, where we go. I say, where we go, where we go, where we go, where we go. This is the Crescent City Connection Podcast. Bringing you the hottest takes from the 504 to the 225. What's going on, guys? Justin here with the Crescent City Connection podcast. I've got JJ, what Blake, up, what up, and Bobby with me. We have a lot to discuss and catch you guys up on. Our Pelicans are off to a brutal start. We're really missing Zion's presence. Uh, but on the other hand, our Saints and Tigers are looking really good. And not only does tomorrow mark the start of Falcons Hate Week, but it's also Bama Hate Week, so you know how we have a lot to say. Well, the Saints didn't do anything before the trade deadline. That just passed, so let's talk a little bit about that. JJ, what you got to say? Look, man, one thing about the about the trade deadline that I would have did, I really wish we would have went get Breeze one more receiver. Like Michael Thomas, he's a beast. We all know can't guard Mike. But when it, when it gets down to the playoffs, I feel like we're going to need one more guy that can get open in man coverage. I think they probably could have went get like Robbie Anderson from the Jets. They were shopping him. Probably could have gotten for like a fifth round pick. And uh, Josh Gordon also was just claimed. I mean, they didn't put a claim on him either. I mean, I also heard some uh, rumors about Devontae Parker, too, from Miami. I mean, yeah, I liked him. Yeah, he's just wasting a weight on him. Well, Miami. that looks like the one good player that Miami decided to keep. They got rid of Kenyon Drake. He went off. They got rid of Minka Fitzpatrick. He's looking real good on that Steelers defense. They gutted that whole team. They tanked him for Tua. But what was the point what, of holding on to him is if you're going to – Well, you got to keep for some your, players. For your know? QB. You your, can't just your complete – Your future QB exactly, to have somebody. Your future, your future, they did just has, beat the Jets you think today. The, yeah, they got their first win. Yeah. Do you think the Saints have a plan going forward about receipt? Like, are they going to sign somebody? Well, or? I mean, Kirkwood's going to be coming back. He's been hurt. And uh, Traquan Smith is going to be coming back too. I guess they got they got faith in them. They they went re-signed uh, little Jordan Humphrey also. I mean, he ain't been doing much. But he's a big body. He's a big body. And definitely. Breeze really hasn't had a chance to throw to him. Right. When, he, when we did put him back on the squad, Teddy B was in there. And it's not like Teddy was looking downfield for every drop yeah. back. I mean, I think we're well aware of that. But as far as Teddy B, where does his performance? I mean, first off, big shout out to well, Teddy Shout Bridgewater. out to Teddy B. 5-0, oh, yeah, we couldn't I, have asked for we anything. We never, better. nobody saw that coming. I, I'll, no. be, I'll be, a, I'll be a, a man and, and admit that I was wrong on oh, Teddy B. I was wrong, B. too. I, I think mean, everybody was wrong. We did a yeah. we did a, a podcast like I think it was the week before he started that first game. Well, we was freaking out. Breeze yeah, we goes were, down. You feel like we you know we're shot. done. But after the Rams game, when we had no game plan to yeah. have Teddy in that game, we were freaking out. Also, I mean, our defense wasn't playing like that. Like as soon as Breeze went down, that defense stepped up. Even special teams, more said punting and and putting him inside the ten and the five. He's the best punter in the game. And you got Marshawn Lattimore. He stepped up. He's taking away the team's number one guy every game. You and that run to... defense, they, they shutting down the running game completely. Our run defense is number one in the NFL right now. Yeah, and Eli Apple's been been doing pretty well. I think oh, he he's dodged, looking nice. He dodged an injury. Yeah, so. and and also, uh, your boy was it? Uh, PJ Williams went down, and CJ Gardner Johnson, the rookie well. from Florida, he slid in, and he's looking like. Look, P.J. Williams might get back healthy and not even see the field. I mean, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson looked like a playmaker on that team. I like his attitude. I like his his old demeanor oh, coming yeah. into the game. And even I like, love him. He's guarding a slot receiver, and, and even when that slot receiver, he had a few receptions on him, he's right there. He's right there in coverage. Yeah, he's yeah, he's, he looks off. really good. I like it. Yeah. So I like yeah, the way I... our defense is playing, especially, especially since they stepped up for Teddy B. I mean... The defensive line is outstanding. Cam Jordan, Davenport's finally starting to look like that that first round pick that we invested in. Yeah, he's starting to. I feel like he's starting to finally feel his yeah. his way on the field. And Davis is reminding me of Jonathan Vilma of that championship '09 oh, team. He's such he's, a leader. He's such a leader. He he's so up vocal. Big time. And he's, when Breeze he, was out, he was leading oh, the huddle. Yeah. Before the games, exactly. You see exactly. the before the games, the yeah. mayor Davis gets it, and then he's like, "Yo, Breeze, get in yeah, here." Yeah, get in here. And Breeze does the little. I love it. I love chant. the little defense, offense switching up and everything. But special teams, Morstead constantly pinning people inside the twenty yard line, and then we have a yeah, one Harris, one special Harris team had return. To return at one game against Seattle. He started. I think he got a little too confident and a couple fumbled it a couple of times, but 
Uh, yeah, I still I feel like he's electric. It's high risk reward with him. Yeah. You know, he's so I, I feel like I feel like he's back in like the Reggie Bush days. Like, yeah. all right, what well, we going to get with this guy? It's like it's 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 either like a 20, 20 yard return touchdown or it's a muff. A muff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I feel like Just we, we do it. need we do need like a guy back there for 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 clutch time when we just got to kind of like that safe. Lance Moore yeah like Lance Moore put, put Michael Thomas just a sure-handed guy no, that please. we don't need a return no, no, please Thomas. don't do that you could put we, Kamara back there he's a sure-handed guy Kamara could be back there he used to do it yeah Kamara could do it yeah I mean Kamara coming off what we think is an injury but I mean do you really think it was as bad as they say it might just be maintenance, maintenance bro, speaking of another guy stepping up Kamara went down and Latavius Murray oh yeah he's killing it 100 yards every game he's killing man it. he looked and they had a lot of people crying when we let Mark Ingram go. And I'm pretty sure the, everybody on the Crescent City Connection podcast said, Saints fans, don't freak out. Latavius Murray is an upgrade from Mark Ingram. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that through the two games that Alvin Kamara missed. Lata- we haven't missed a step in the running game. Now, Latavius you know, Murray now, is impressive. If Sean Payton can find the perfect balance between yeah. the two, it could it could be nastier than the Ingram yeah. Kamara duo. You know, well so, the only the only problem with that is Murray. It, he's more of a workhorse, and so he gets better with touches. Yeah. He's also made a comment that when guys are tired in the fourth quarter, that's when he's starting to get his he's just his win. Yeah. So that's why he's just constantly running over people towards the end of the game. But, but still, I mean, if he a- if he can get the touches early. Towards the fourth quarter, and he's got that second win. Well, yeah, he's, other one, he's one of those guys that likes to get twenty carries a game, exactly. twenty plus. But so that could have been a blessing in disguise with Kamara yeah. going down because that I I see like it's he's a new running back on a brand new team, trust. and you, he I think he gained a lot of confidence. And I mean, I got a lot of trust in Sean Payton that he's gonna find a perfect mixture between them two. Speaking so, of Sean Payton, I mean, head coach he's got to be coach of the year. Oh no, doubt. Gotta head be. coach, no doubt. There's nothing even close. I mean, you can argue Belichick leading that defense or whatever, but I mean, it, blah blah blah. Sean Payton's got to be coach of the year, yeah. in my opinion. And like we we could talk, we could give our shout outs to Teddy B, but you put Teddy B on on a team with without like let's say a Sean Payton. Uh, uh, Andy Reid, our really good offensive coordinator. But Drew Brees in I don't his think ear. we win those games. But Drew look Brees at, in his ear while he's playing. Yeah, just, yeah. I'll, just look who's at another quarterback coach. Look at how Pittsburgh happened. Ben Roethlisberger went down. I mean, their second string also went down with that huge hit, but they still. Yeah, but they don't not have like, the offensive mastermind. Exactly. They're not. That's why they're Sean not Payton's offensive special. coordinated like that and can make special game plans and schemes. Yeah. Well, I think that's why Teddy he took less money to stay with the Saints because it's a perfect. It's a perfect atmosphere, you know. You got, uh, you got Sean Payton. You got Drew Brees to learn from. You got a good team around you. Or if he would have took a little bit more money and went to, let's say, Miami, I mean, he'd he he would have been looking bad. Even though he's a, a decent quarterback, fire, yeah. oh, yeah, he would have been looking would. bad. And now he he made a whoever is advising him is is really good because yeah, he took less money this year, but look how high his stock is now. They were going going into to free 30. agency next year, twenty to thirty. He's mil. gonna, yeah, he's about to get paid. So whether that's from us or from somebody else, he's about to get paid. Oh yeah, he's gonna be a starter. He's gonna make about twenty million a year, probably. I think. Yeah. So JJ, I know you were saying trade trade Teddy B before the trade deadline. Look, I mean, I can't say I agree with that. I mean, I think you got to keep him back there just in case Drew goes down again. Look, I I, I like Teddy B. I I want him to get his ring. And honest, now that the trade deadline's through and he's on, still on the team, he's going to get his ring because we're the best team in the NFL. But it's just business. It's just business. He's going he's gonna to be demanding 20 to 30 mil, like Bobby said. Where are we going to come up with that? Well, what happens if Drew retires this Drew, year? I th- Drew's coming I think back. We, I think we all seen by, by the way this dude is itching to get see- back in the game on the sideline and the way he came back with absolutely zero rust. And then... The absolutely automatic upgrade that he was when he got into the lineup, it was an automatic upgrade. You've seen it. Yeah, you can it see. It went from 200 passing yards back up to 400 when Breeze got you in You can there. see the fire in his eyes. He, I mean, he is. He's not done. No. So, at the very least, I think he'll play one more year. I think maybe so, if he wouldn't have got hurt, maybe he would have retired. So, I year. mean, but what you going to do? Are you going to be paying? You still need a backup that can come in and do it. Yeah, but how are you going to do it money-wise? You're still going to have Breeze with 25 mil, and then and then Teddy's going to be demanding that too. It wouldn't work. I mean, Teddy's gone. If, if Drew retires and we're not going to sign Teddy, That's why gone. I say get what you could have got for him. 
I don't nah, think it's because I don't now think, you're gonna get nothing. For see, it. Uh, now you get nothing. You looking at? I think you're looking at too much as a business wise. But it is That's a what business. It is. But it's also it is a business. But it's also the the locker room, the presence of Teddy, how everybody rallied behind him. Teddy's a great, great football player as far as teammate wise. Everybody loves the way they he said the talks. same thing with Mark Ingram though. Nah. They said Mark Ingram was the number one teammate on them. We got rid of him. Mark there Ingram was, was there no, the longest there was no besides downgrade. Drew and Cam. I'm saying there's no downgrade. But I'm just saying, our, Teddy, our the, locker room his is story, so tight. His story and the way he composes himself and everything Bro, you about looking being at hurt. it too much like, I'm like, just, a, like I'm a fan just boy. No, I'm not. I'm looking I'm at not like looking a, as a fan. Like a I know real, you're looking at it as a business, like analyst. but if you trade Teddy after he goes 5-0 and and how the impact he has on the team, what does that tell to the rest of the guys in the locker room? That no matter what kind of impact, no matter if they step up or not, they can get traded because they're worth value no, it now. Sh- it shows them that we're trying to do everything in our power as a front office to, to upgrade, win a championship, to upgrade the team. So which one of you? So am I? Am I uh, one of those people that can be extradited for that? Who are can you? Can I be traded? Who are you? Exactly. Am I? am a safety now. You're a safety. You're a safety. I'm just saying. I'm a safety <laughs> as a player, as a safety. And but, you trying to anything possible to get a championship, you're saying, and I stepped up huge, and now I got value. Are you going to trade me away because you're trying right, to get right, a championship? Look at, all right, for example, Tell we, me. We, have our two, we have our two starting safeties, and one of our safeties went down, and our starting safety came back, and we have two top-of-the-line safeties, all-time greats. Yeah. Yes, I would trade you. Because definitely if I'm, let's say right, we then. are weak at wide receiver, and I could trade you to upgrade our wide receiver position. I would do it. So that's what I'm that's saying. Smart. So what kind of message does that send to the other players it, that, it aren't, them that, that aren't the Drew Brees or just got the huge contract? If I don't have the huge you know, contract You know who would have traded Teddy? The Patriots. Who's in a Super Bowl exactly. every year? The Patriots. Exactly. Because they run it like a business. Exactly. It's a that's, business. That's, that's, that's the, smart the way only to do it. organization that does that. The only and organization. That's, that's why, why they so good. Stop comparing year. every organization to the Patriots. Why would you? They, they are the franchise to replicate it are the model so what, what i'm saying is and what blake is saying is we would do that and that's something the patriots would do and you're saying i wouldn't do that so why wouldn't you want to do something that the patriots would do because you don't have a backup what if drew goes down again we got Taysom, baby <laughs> come on we were, <laughs> well, we were arguing about Taysom. this earlier in the year i mean jj was dead set on that's Taysom a fanboy starting answer right there no i still Teddy. think i still think Taysom. Is going to be the future at quarterback. I do. Fanboy answer right there. Talking about I was fanboy. It's a fanboy answer. He hasn't started yet, but he's the okay. future. So he's, you're going to go into the playoffs. He's older. He's older, than, he's older no. than Teddy, but yet he's the future. I just feel, look, as good With as I no think experience. Teddy is, I don't think he's going to win you a Super Bowl. I think he can win you these regular season games. But regardless, in my opinion, if Breeze goes down, we're, we're not going to win a Super Bowl. We could beat these teams in a regular season. But if Breeze goes down, we won't win a Super Bowl. So I would take the chance. I would take the chance that, you know, that if Breeze yeah, goes ag- down, we're done. We can agree to disagree. So I mean, I just want the safety of somebody decent. Yeah, I, up so sure does Taysom win a Super Bowl? It's possible. I think he has a way higher ceiling. The Teddy? Yeah. But I don't think he – I honestly, I don't think he would win it either. I don't think he would win it either. But that's why I'm saying I would take the chance of going upgrade a position by trading Teddy – because regardless, if Breeze goes down, we're yeah, not winning the no, Super Bowl. Yeah, no matter who's in there, either yeah. way, either 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 player. Yeah. All right, I got you. I got you. <laughs> but I mean, as far as you know, trade deadline gone. We we kind of still wondering what's going on with the number two receiver. So I don't really don't know, you know, any options besides. I mean, maybe Des Bryant. Is he even working out? Yeah, they, they had they they have. Uh, I mean, I know had he a couple of all teams. the time every game. Yeah, they but... have had some teams have interest in him, and don't be surprised. If we bring him in, he I, I don't know how healthy he is right now, but he knows our playbook, and he said he wants us to be the first team. He's given us the first chance to sign him. But, I mean, we're in a bye week right now, and we still haven't got him. Yeah, would I would feel like if we were to get him, it would be now. Yeah, right. like, what's well, I mean, he waiting on he had an, if we were going to get him? He had his injury, like, what, in week 12 or something last year? Something yeah, like? and the Achilles, so it, I mean, it takes like eight, takes like close eight to months. Him. Yeah, close so. to a year, depending on how you rehab, if you're not trying to rehab yeah. to get back quick. And another thing... And he's older, so it might take a little bit longer than recovery. The the Seahawks just went get uh, Josh Gordon, and they had word that yeah. Russell Russell Wilson wanted them to go get Antonio Brown. That's Antonio crazy. Brown is trying to go get on a team right now. Yeah, because he, he wanted to see... ruled that out already. He wanted to see which team was going to be good and then go to them. <clears throat> well, we're good. 
Uh, Come on, I'm, who that? I'm good on that. Well, yeah, we got the Falcons Sunday, chance, 12 o'clock. Man. Falcons, uh... One F and the seven Falcons. this year. I'm not even going to say the word. One and just, seven. That's f- are Falcons in tank mode? Oh, man. It's got to be tough to I just They're in tank fan. mode. They're, I don't yeah, think I'm they're surprised in, that coach is still on I the team. I don't think they're in tank mode. I just think their head coach and their office is just that bad. Well, they're definitely in tank mode. They they're have, one and seven. They have, some, they have the offense to put up points. There's no. I don't see why they're yeah, one Yeah, their seven. offense is not the problem. Their defense can't stop anybody. Yeah, the offense was never the problem. I mean, the, the, the coordinator might be... Cause uh, when they, when Shanahan was there, they looked amazing. Yeah, they they made a a terrible decision letting go of Shanahan. We see what he's doing with the four and nine. Well, they should have right just now. made him head coach. I mean, cause he he's yeah, amazing. Dan Quinn, he's a terrible coach. No, let let's not get this wrong though. It is a division game, and we always somehow miracles happen not this year. against us. Against yeah, well, not this year. Year. we're we're excited to have uh, the Dirty Birds coming yeah. to our house and uh, I mean, handle up on last, that. It's gonna be it's last gonna be year. Very the Buccaneers fun beating with them down. Fitzmagic came and waxed us so. Yeah, but th- this team is. is oh yeah, we on a Yeah, but we level, weren't yeah. the only team they beat. Uh, Fitz Fitz Magic went uh, went Steelers. on for like four weeks. Yeah, he went like yeah. four straight. Yeah, I mean, Fitz Magic went on today spot. when Miami beat uh, the Jets. <laughs> yeah, he's a good quarterback. I mean, the gosh damn Jets. He's not like <laughs> top. I'd say fifteen, but he's right there. Let's let's jump into some LSU talk. I mean, obviously we're excited about this game. Number one, number two, we got Bama. Um, it's gonna be exciting. What, what what's your opinions on on this game coming coming up, Bob? I mean, Bam has been having our number for how many years now? Eight years. I mean, when they came to the Superdome in our house and beat us for the championship, that kind of hurt. When they've been killing us every they year, they shut us out. They wouldn't let us over the fifty yard line. I that know. was embarrassing. It, even, it's, but it's been hurting lately. The game before we beat them that year. Yep. I know that's what I'm saying. And ever they, since they then, they played us the same year again and shut us out. Ever since that, ever since that championship like, it game, it seems like our program hurting. took a big hit after know, that game. I know. And it's like we finally crawling out of that. That's deep what I'm saying. Pit. That's what I was getting to. It finally seems like, hey, who is that coming out of that pit? Is that Burrow? Look, is that LSU over there? This this ain't the same LSU no, offense. Not. No. And no, no, no. Ten speed left, ten speed right for we all have, my Riverside fans. We have an LSU quarterback. At the top of the Heisman talk right now. Yeah, he's number one. Let that Heisman sink race. in. It's his to lose. Yeah, it's his to lose. Because two has missed games. Uh, Hurts lost to Kansas. Kansas. No, Kansas State. It's Kansas I'm sorry. State. Yeah. So it's it's his one to of lose. the week. One of the week Kansas teams. Well, they got that Ohio State uh, defensive end starting to creep in there too. He's that's supposed pretty, to be like a top. Dude, a top that's, think, that's pretty I impressive. Think, a defensive end creeping into Heisman. I, I don't think a defensive player will win. It hasn't been no. done since Charles Woodson. Yeah, I, I think mean, if Matthew Burrow, had a good chance. I think Badger should have won it. If Burrow takes down Bama, and obviously, oh, it's his. It's his. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, granted, we don't lo- lo- drop any more games after that, but I, I don't see now, that. Now, if happening. if Burrow takes down Bama with the same fashion he's been doing, maybe not as many yards, but no. if he does the same it thing, it doesn't matter. Just win the game. If he beats Bama, period, he just Bama, gotta win. Period, he just his, gotta win. His draft stock. Yeah, I think the draft wow. stock is already. I think the draft stock's already super high. He's but I'm like, talking about he might, he might, well, he might a, jump in there. There's a lot of like people waiting to QBs. see the outcome of this game he's because top 10 regardless, I think it, a lot of people feel like it's not really official until you do it against Bama. Or yeah, but I mean, Auburn, Auburn is is an elite uh, SEC defense, and he shredded them. Yeah, yeah. Auburn. Florida, Florida is an elite defense. I mean. You, Auburn's probably the best defense in the in the conference, I'd say. I'm saying, when when they have this draft coming up in the NFL this year, you're gonna see a lot of Auburn defenders in it. You're gonna see a lot of Florida yeah, defenders. I agree. And with that. Burrow, he, I mean, he did his thing against both those teams. Yeah. So that makes me feel like he's gonna do his thing against Bama. We're we're gonna score at least 20 points against Bama. Now, can the defense? Can that's, the defense play? That's another story. Can the defense stop Tua? And they have a, a they have a lot of weapons on the outside. Yeah. About to say who's who's the better offense? I think we have the better offense. Yeah, but Alabama thinks they have the better offense. But I mean, it's you know we have it is very close. I'm gonna say it's, it's what and what. I, mean, I think it's we right. have the better offense. And granted, Tua. And I, I mean, think we have the better offensive coordinator too. We we got the guy that's been engineering this Saints offense yeah. for years. And look what he's doing. He's taking college football by storm. I mean, Joe Burrow, he's averaging, I mean, like 300, 400 yards. He's going to crush every LSU passing record in history. He's already done he's it. Already, he's already done a couple. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's impressive. Yeah. Like, how does one guy make that much of a difference in, in one offseason? That's crazy. I don't, and think, I, mean, I don't think it's one guy. I think it's 
I mean, it is maybe more of him, but I feel like they finally have a throwing tempo. Dude, I like, that's what he brought. That's like, what he brought to the throw. team. But just, I feel like they spread off. Yeah. I feel like they finally just spread opened offense. up the entire playbook instead of like one two page. That's like, what Joe Brady brought to the team, right. and that's yeah. that's the difference that's going into this game too. Saban ain't gonna be able to just stack the box against us no more. No, that's what he's been doing for the last eight years. We have yes, we have good running backs, but when you put an eight, nine, ten, eleven, Saban would sometimes put everybody in the box, daring us to throw the ball, and we would still run it. You, you if you stack the box against us, Burrow is gonna shred you. Even if you don't stack the boxes against us, Burrow is still gonna shred you. And if you don't stack, if you play us for the pass, we're gonna hand it off. Clyde to Edwards Alaire is an NFL back. Hilaire is dangerous. Yes. And we, I mean, Emery is a good back, too. He hasn't been getting many carries, but then you got the other, Davis, Davis Price. Price yeah. He's another NFL running back. We are stacked on offense. Offensive line has been playing great. Oh, wide I mean, receiver core is just yeah. Jamar Audio Chase. You got Terrace Marshall Jr. You got Jefferson. They're all NFL wide receivers. And then Moss has been stepping up big time. He's, a, he's, he's a getting re- more and more Sullivan. work every game. You got two... You got two really good tight ends. I mean, we're stacked. We're stacked. And it's going to be a fun game. Fun game, definitely, that's for sure. Uh, I, st- I guess Saban still hasn't said anything official about whether oh, or not he's, he's, playing. Playing. he's playing. I'm he's assuming playing. he's going to be he's playing, playing, but, you know, I, I guess that'll – maybe it won't be coming this week. Maybe it'll be a game time decision. Yeah, I don't need so to see to an injury report to know he's playing. Yeah, yeah they, they, they they're, not gonna, they're not going to show their hand. I mean, Saban's not – not dumb. He's gonna he's gonna wait into the game to tell you, but he's playing. Trust yeah, me, he's he's, playing. he's been keeping an eye on us throughout the throughout the year. Yeah, he he, he knows he knows. I, he's, he's seen us climbing, bro. He, I'm I'm pretty sure he always has an bro, eye on I th- us I every think, year. I think he's scared. I, I, I'm not gonna go as far to say he's scared, but I say he's, he's probably, worried. He's concerned. Nervous. I think he's worried yeah, about man. this game because he sees that threat finally, bro. Their strength of schedule. They haven't played nobody. It's like the Patriots. So, if they lose this game, I don't think they make the playoffs. No, their their resume would look horrible. And on the flip side, us, we've played three top 10 teams, four top 25 teams. So, once we play Bama, that'll be four top 10 teams we're played. Our strength of schedule is great. So, if we lose to a close game at Alabama... We, I still think we get into the playoffs because of our strength of schedule. Yeah, I believe we can still climb it up. Climb but on the flip in. side with them, if they lose to the only good team they play, I don't think they can make it. That's just my opinion. Don't they play Auburn, Auburn still? Yeah, I, I think they play them. Yeah, they play them at the end of the year. Yeah. So that might be the only chance they have. Yeah. So, yeah, LSU, Alabama, Saturday, 2.30. I, I We're wanna, excited. I want to go, I wanna go just... Just quick rattling off, position by position, position by position, who y'all think got the edge? LSU, Bama. Who y'all think got the edge at quarterback? I think it's got to be. Tua versus Burrow. I think it's got to be Burrow because, you know, one, he's not coming off the injury. Um, Two, I think he's comfortable at this point in the season, comfortable with his receivers, comfortable with his offensive line. So I I think I got to give it to Burrow there over Tua. Yeah, I agree. I I think Burrow's just, he's he's locked in right now. What do you think, Blake? I got to give it to Burrow. I mean, Burrow shred, Burrow will shred any part of the field. Two is like a – he's a he throws a lot of deep balls, and he, I don't know if he's as accurate as, as Burrow is. Mm, he's pretty accurate. Don't don't get it twisted. He's accurate. I mean, there's a reason why they got him projected first overall, but I think people are still sleeping on Burrow. Like you said, they're still waiting. They're still kind of in wait-and-see mode with Burrow, but we've been watching him all year. We know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, two has stepped up in some pretty, pretty big games too. So that's can't that's take that away that's one him. difference. Yeah, who's more? Clutch? I mean, two that's, two has been in all yeah, these big had more games. More opportunities to be clutch yeah. than Burrow, but I I still gotta give the edge to Burrow. Bobby, what you think? I mean, not to switch it up, guys, but I'm gonna have to go Burrow. <laughs> <laughs> all right, running back. Who y'all think got the edge? They got not Nigel Harris. We got Clyde edwards alaire Honestly, I don't watch enough Bama football to to. Oh know. come on, skip this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's kind of, that's kind of hard to say. I believe I mean, Alabama. Almost, I think Nigel. I, I think Alabama. Yeah. I, 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 like I. They I just that's all, what I'm thinking too, but I don't want to say it. I mean, you can't be biased. You gotta yeah, you gotta it's go just, with it. I'm just going by eye test. Look, I, I don't think Clyde Edwards-Alaire has that elite athleticism, but he's a smart runner, and 
it seems like he always makes the first guy miss. He's very agile and he's he's got really good vision. So I, I'm going I'm I'm gonna go with the LSU back on that. But all right, what y'all think about the wide receivers? They have three. I think all, receivers going in the first round this year. I, I think I, it's it's just so. I think they. I think LSU and Alabama's wide receivers are going to the league. I think that's all. Yeah. all I could almost it's, call that. You see, that's it's, a push. It's, yeah, it's yeah, almost. Yeah, like I mean, what what do you what can you I, I'm say? Going, I'm going. I'm going LSU again biased. too, just I, because I think that I think that LSU has the best receiver, and that's Jamar Chase. And the only reason he's not in the, in the in the draft this year is because I think he's just he's a, sophomore. a sophomore. Yeah. So and they they got Jerry Ju- uh, Jerry Judy. Yeah. They got him going top ten, I think, and he's he's elite. He reminds me of Julio. Wow, you watching him back he, he in kinda, Alabama. He kind of theme, seems more like a like a T.Y. Hilton to me, like a speedster. Like you just get the ball in his hands, and like Jamar Chase, he seems like like Odell Beckham. That's who. I, that's my comparison, bro. He he's you hit him on really that quick good. slant, he's gone. And Terrace Marshall, he looks like like Brandon Marshall to me. Like you could just throw it up to this guy. Yeah, we've been missing him big time. Yeah, no doubt. I feel so. like if you switch both the receivers for each team, neither team really loses a step. Bro, and another thing. This rivalry between Bama and LSU, LSU just passed up Bama in recruiting for next year. We're number one. And you want to know what I think has a lot to do with that? Our offensive coordinator and the way just Joe Burrow how, is Just how playing. fun our offense oh, yeah. is. yeah, everybody. You know, the we, quarterbacks, like young quarterbacks are seeing Joe Burrow now, and they're like, all right, I want to go to LSU. Bro, it, just it wasn't like that. Fun. Even the tight end. We got a five-star tight end coming in. Right. Because they see how we're using Moss. Yeah. We just uh, – we just got a commitment from uh, the coldest Crawford. <laughs> the coldest, the coldest Crawford. my man's the name coldest is the coldest to ever do it. Th- to good. ever do it is not really his middle name, but his first name is the coldest, spelled like it sounds, hey. Crawford. But yeah. he's supposed to be that's good. A good I mean, with a name like that, that is a I, I want to know, is, was that his birth name or did he yes. change? That was his birth name. No, that's his birth Supposedly. name. Supposedly. Uh, sure? Shout out to his parents. I read somewhere where it wasn't his real name. Did they change it? I don't know if that's his real name. I mean, we know a guy that legally changed his name to 10 Speed. So. Jared 10 Speed Caesar. Shout out. Shout out. But yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what the coldest Crawford can, yeah. uh, can do for us. But just, look, just looking at LSU, though, it, it, seems, it just seems fun to play there. Like, it just seems like... Every, everybody's having fun playing that, and then when you look at Bama, it seems like they're just strict. Yeah, you your, know? your head coach isn't an uptight asshole. I mean, it, it seems like like <laughs> coach, for, coach, coach, coach awesome. o knows how to have a good time. He knows when it's a big win that he yeah. can let the guys celebrate, celebrate a little bit. It seems yeah. like Saban would be, you know, if they win a big game, he'd be like, "Oh, calm down, you know." Don't, yeah, he's like Belichick. Yeah, college. yeah. Plus, you can never under, crack a you smile. Can, you can understand when Nick is like yelling at you, Coach O. You probably be like, "All right, he's bro." Coach O's still gonna get on you though, but you can't oh, understand that's what he's be, saying. That's gotta be scary though. That, when Coach with O voice? with that raspy voice comes at you, you do something wrong. Let that dude. That dude's built like a tank too. Let that dude come at you. I'm gonna just think of Waterboy. The guy is like, you know, remember Bob Yeah, high but imagine him like <laughs> double the size. Like, y'all ever seen a video of him doing an interview and like there's some stuff going on in the background of a practice facility? Like they're making a bunch of noise. and He's like, hold on a second, stop with the noise. Yeah, he had to do yeah. it like two or three times, but it was just yeah. hilarious. But, he probably but, couldn't understand what he's saying. That's what he kept doing. But I just, I just wanna, I just wanna, if any Crimson Tide fans listen to this, the tides are turning. LSU, LSU's coming this for that. This could be the ass. change under the guard right we here. We coming, we coming. We got the top spot now, and I think we're gonna have it for a while. We're gonna win this week, and like we were saying, number one recruiting class. Get used to seeing LSU at that number one spot. Yes, sir. And don't forget to check out our LSU Bama hype video that we just posted on our YouTube channel. The official, the official, 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 it's official. It's, LSU it's versus sweet. Bama hype video. You guys video. are gonna enjoy it. So we're excited about the LSU Bama matchup this weekend, but we wanna. Touch on the the Pelicans situation a little bit. I mean, we just don't want to. We're not touching on them. Let's dive into all right, the Pelicans. Let's, let, let's, let's get let's into go, this because I got a good bit to say. I mean, let's get a handful they're of off, this They're off to a, a pretty slow start. I mean, they just picked up their first win the other night, and it's but it's it's been brutal. I mean, Drew Holiday has been bad. JJ Reddick's field goal percentage is not great. Let's let's talk about Drew. What, what's wrong with Drew, man? Man, I kind of I kind of think it's just a theory. Maybe David Griffin put too much pressure on him in the off season. Say, I was thinking that's like, what I was thinking. In the too. off season, too much spotlight. Like I th- he he was, he it w- it was an effort to try to take pressure off of Zion. He put all the pressure on Drew. He said, "Yo, I just Drew. I don't want you to be just an underrated player. I want you to be an MVP candidate. 
I want to build the team around you. You are the centerpiece. And Drew Holiday has never been that. You're paying this man a lot of money. I think he's expected to be that in the situation he's yeah. in now. You don't think you don't think Griff went to went to Drew before and was like, "Yo, can you handle this?" You don't think he had that conversation yeah, with Drew like, was- "Yo, this is what I want to do. I want to give like you are the dude." You know, like I want you to have a huge season. I'm I'm, you know, you need to take the pressure off of these young guys. Yeah, you don't I do. think he sat down I with do, Drew and but had- it was fine. He was fine doing doing what he's been doing since he's, the whole time he's been here. Yeah, but if you're Drew, you're an alpha dog. You are a pro now. athlete. If David Griffin comes up to you and says, can you handle this? You're not going to say no. Who says no? You're not going to say, no, I can't handle this. You're going to say, yep, man, I'm that, I'm that dude. Yeah, saying, I'm, dude his, his mind I'm a max should, player. His mindset should be that he's capable that of should doing be what every we need athlete, to do. That should be every pro athlete's mindset, though. I just, I don't know. I, I he had a good half the other night, but he is just not looking good. And and honestly, like I've been watching Pelicans basketball, f- f- you know, for a he's long a time. notoriously slow N- starter. Notoriously though. slow starter, but dude, I've watched a lot of times where like in clutch time or like late in the fourth quarter, like he does something, some boneheaded move. Yeah, you know, he's not the greatest decision maker with the basketball. That's that, and that's why we start Lonzo, and we and we guard. like to have him at the two, yeah. but. When you have him at the two, he's not an elite shooter. That's what you want to have as the two guard. And then he's not really slashing either. Like if if you're if you're a prototypical two guard, you got to be moving without the basketball. Yeah, look at JJ. Right? And, and when when Lonzo has the ball up top, I feel like Drew kind of just goes on the on the wing or he goes in the corner and he just waits right there and he waits until Lonzo can't make a play to give it to him. And then that's when he decides to do something. But look, Lonzo is trying to get he's his number one mindset is to get everybody involved. So move around. Yeah. Go set screens. That's what that's what this offense is meant to do. Move it's a Golden State offense. And if you watch Golden State in their glory days, they're not just posted up. They're not just standing there. They're moving around. They're setting screens for the ball. They're setting screens for the off guard. They're getting back cuts. They're not just standing around. And that's what Drew does a lot. Yeah, and I mean, look, look at the way JJ Redick plays that position. I mean, he the way he gets open, like he just finds his spots. Granted, he's not shooting the ball great right now, but I think it'll come around. The laws of average are going to even out for JJ Redick. He Reddick, finds trust his me. spot. The way he plays off ball is the way we need Drew. Like we need Drew yeah. to, to make these cuts and to come off these screens and pop the three. And he's not doing it right now. I mean, defensively though, Drew is Drew, you know. But yeah. Even defensively, he don't look that good right now, to be honest with you. I mean, granted, we probably, you know, the injury that he just came off of, we don't know how serious, you know, how much that was bothering him for however long it was. So that might have had a but little that, bit to do that, with it. That could have a, a little bit to do with just team defense is terrible right That's now. That's a very the good thing to say. The defense as a whole looks terrible. And I think one of those reasons is because the lineups that are put on the floor a lot. Yeah. Some of these lineups that Gentry's put on the floor, it's just like, dude, what are you? doing i mean a few games ago i think there was a time where like lonzo didn't see the floor in the fourth quarter yeah like lonzo just didn't see the floor yeah and like sometimes and, and that's like, the guy that you want to be the general of your offense yeah, so why I mean, is he not in the game you think you're gonna give him that time to be that gen- i don't know it's just He's, the lineups that gentry's coming up with i'm just not but crazy about. In, in, in gentry's defense which i you know, I just want to give him the benefit benefit of the doubt for right now, even though I am a hard critic on him right now. I don't think he's a, a good coach. But in his defense, Lonzo, he needs to penetrate more. I feel like he's settling too much for the three. For the three. Thank you. Yeah. Why is he shooting so many threes? Look, I understand you have a shot now. It's a decent shot, but it's not elite. Not needed. It's not needed for on no. our team, dude. Dude, shoot when you're open, but don't just come up and shoot we, the ball. Yeah, we do not. You have to be starting offense. So drive, <laughs> kick. Yeah, and, I mean, it, it could it could be a, it could be a little different from Lonzo's point of view. I mean, I'd like to see a little. Bro, bit if you're more the guard, you have too. to penetrate, draw the second defender, kick it out. You know, I mean, that's your job. It's not just selling, settling for threes, and but it's not just him settling. I think everybody's settling for threes, dude. We need a. Drive the ball more, but that's where Gentry comes in. That's that's what he wants. He wants our team to shoot forty threes per game. Yeah, he wants. So it's not pace. really all the players' fault. 
Yeah, and I mean, I but, think Gentry's kind of struggling with yeah. his lineups also because, well, he's without favors right now. He's obviously without Zion right now. You know, think, Zion's definitely going to clean a lot of, like, as right. far as rebounding, Which is he's going to clean that the up. second chance points are just eating. Eating us alive. Like, and then offensively, I mean, you could just get it to him, and he's gonna create. You know. Yeah. I mean, you could you could run your whole offense through Zion. I mean, Bobby, what you you know what you what you got to say? I mean, first, I don't think Gentry was really prepared to to play ball without Zion to begin with. I don't think there was really a game plan without Zion. But you gotta playing. be prepared. I know you gotta be prepared, but I'm just saying, as far as, like, Gentry, and as stuff, far though. as line, yeah, I, I don't think yeah, he looks, was. I don't the, think they were like strategizing. You got certain lineups in your him. head. You know what I'm saying? You got certain lineups. Yeah, yeah that look at like the first game of the season. He had no idea who he wanted to play. Who he wanted to start. That's what I'm saying. I don't he think played, he was prepared. He played 13 at all. players. What is the summer league for? What is the preseason for? Dude, I think I think eight players is rotation, right? Is generally well, about definitely what you're in the rotating. playoffs. And the playoffs, when it gets like closed, deeper yeah. in the season. But I mean, eight the, players. The the amount of good players we have, you can you can go ten deep. But you see, just have to know how to distribute dude, we them just minutes. Have so many guards. Yeah, it's all guards, man. We don't have it's no big men. We don't. We don't. And I, and I don't know how much of a fit favors. Favors is, is right. He's that's slow. That was my next point. And that's and that's why I think Moore's not playing. He's just the with the quick pace that we play. Moore's just not quick. He's like an old style kind of guard that wants to just, I mean, go out there and shoot and then post up and stuff. I mean, he's not really a, a think, good fit. I think a, the problem with Moore is like one reason why he's probably still with us is because he is undersized and he may be a little bit harder to trade than someone else, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think we would trade him by the deadline, though. Yeah, I, I could see. He's going to draw some more. interest. I could see Moore going He's not a bad year. player. He's really not. I mean, he's, he's, he's dude, he started what last year for us. Yeah. You just talk about depth. I mean, we're missing Zion. We're missing Darius Miller and we could still go 14 deep. We have you almost have to take some of our depth, consolidate and upgrade some to of our starters. Player, right. That's what right. I'm saying. Cuz right. you have two we just we just have too many package deals somebody you got to package You have too many this. pretty good players and not enough elite right. players. Well, I'll give you one elite player, Brandon Ingram. Bro, Maxim, I'm, Maxim. They 20, can't 20, let this guy go. Twenty-seven ish points, a little bit over twenty-seven points per game, and he is playing tomorrow. He didn't have a concussion, so that's plus. Yeah, he missed the second half in that game. With him, I think we win that game. Right, he, dude, he is. He's leading. He's leading the team in in points. He's leading the team in rebounds. He's leading the team in blocks. He's serious. He yeah. said he, he said he feels a lot more comfortable here than he did in that, oh, yeah. uh, there's LA. A lot, there's a lot less pressure. There's a lot of pressure, exactly. Yeah, what their the Lakers organization was was in shambles Showtime. last year. Almost like our organization last year. And our our organization front office wise is cleaned up. Oh, and yeah, I no think doubt. that's I mean I I think a lot, the, these the players feel comfortable. I mean but well, granted, you know Ingram, he still has a lot to prove. It's a contract year for him. We, you know, we didn't yeah. we we didn't resign him yet. I mean, ho- hopefully. That's I think we're just kind of waiting to see if he can stay healthy for a whole right. year because he yeah. hasn't done that yet. Yeah. But exactly. he is a restricted free agent, so if he does test the market, we can match his money. Yeah. And he hasn't shown that, like let's say Eric Gordon, he just didn't want to be here, and we matched and him. Maxed him anyway. Like if if Brandon Ingram goes and he likes an offer, he takes it. But we match him. He's not gonna be like, I don't want to be here. You know, he may want to be somewhere else more, but he don't mind being here either. Yeah. So if we match him, he's not gonna be mad. Right. He's I'm, still like Bobby just said. He's, he's he has said that he feels more comfortable here compared to L. A. So yeah. I mean, that should that sounds like a good enough reason to stick around to me, and especially if you win ball games when Zion yeah. comes back. Bro, you so you have, man. If if Drew could just get it together, and then Zion comes back. And you got Brandon Ingram playing the way he's playing, yeah, bro. That's that's a really good three man. And it's just hard not to think of Drew Holiday. All right, so like I know Drew Holiday's like best ball. Like we've seen Drew Holiday yeah. play his. He's best not. Ball. This I is mean, not last him. year. No, last year in the playoffs against Portland, or what? Two years ago, last. two years when we played Portland. I mean, dude, he was going nuts, yeah, glassing. He impressed, a, he impressed a lot of people. That he, I mean, really, since he's been here, he's looked good. He was looking he's like, like a borderline two-way. all-star. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we thought we were going to be able to make that argument for him this year, but yeah. so far it doesn't really look like that. So what are we doing the rest? Like, by the time Zion comes back, we might be too far in a hole 
to dig out of. So what do like what is this year? That was my question. If we're too far in a hole, what is it? Is, the, is Gentry you're possibly not, going to be gone no, halfway through no, the season? You're not expecting to win a championship this year. I mean, sure. no, I know that, but I'm firing. I'm firing Gentry right now. I don't think it's you can. I don't, Why? I don't know if you can because Zion got injured. I think you. I think he's got to give Gentry a whole, year. That's been his whole thing. Like, I feel like he's since had he's been here. Yeah, look excuses. how many good players you still have. I mean, I agree, but. I think Griff is going to give him a full year of Zion healthy before he makes it. I feel like there's just an excuse every year to keep it. It is. It's the same excuse every year for him. what's What's the definition of like a good coach? You have to adapt, adapt, adjust your coaching philosophy to the roster roster. that you have. Look at Greg Popovich. He changes the way he coaches every year depending on his roster. There is only one way Gentry can coach. You you basically as a GM, you have to adjust your roster for your coach. For your coach. Rather than the other and that's around. what Griffin did. He he handed Gentry the roster to play his style and it's still not working. Yeah, without Zion, but we still have a lot of good players. We have a lot of good players and he's still not looking good. Questionable lineups. Defense looks horrible. Second chance points killing us. You know, you know who, you know who I think would make a great fit as our head coach. The way we have young players and great two way ball players and everything. Mark Jackson, when he what he did with Golden State. With yeah, Clay but he's never Steph, really won. He's he's not a winning coach. Dude, Steve Kerr winning. came over and took over and won the championships that he should have won. But how? What does that say about Mark Jackson? As soon as Mark Jackson leaves, they bring a new coach and they win a championship. Yeah, it's like the same thing as Tony Dungy did when uh when Chucky went over there. John Gruden went to Tampa Bay and won the uh the Super Bowl. That was John Gruden's team. I mean, that was uh Tony Dungy's team. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So he kind of just stepped th- in and th- took I over. I think Gruden's a better coach than than Dungey, though. Okay, that's that's just an opinion. But I'm but I'm just saying is. But I, I don't I don't see what you're saying. I'm saying Mark. I feel like Mark Jackson you, you would do a better you're, job. You're, give, you're making a, a argument I'm, against Mark Jackson because you said as soon as Kerr came, they won the championship. I said that's an opinion when you said you would rather John Gruden over Tony Dungey. But I'm saying Mark Jackson. <laughs> I feel like with this crew, would be a better fit. I wish than they would have never fired Monty Williams. Personally, mine has got the Suns looking good. Yeah, I, I was a complaint. I mean, where, where would we be today? If it'd be a whole different. Where it'd would be a we whole be different, today? Like it'd be <laughs> a bro, reality. Look, look at that. Here? Look at the ro- roster that Monty Williams took to the playoffs. Yeah. Give Monty Williams this roster. I agree completely. Bro, they got other coaches you can get. I've been I've been screaming Van Gun. I'll go get either of the Van Gun. I'll take Van Gun. I'm not opposed to that either. I mean. The fat, the fat not Van the Gundy. Fat one. No, Dude, not the, the fat, fat Van Gundy. Not go look one. at his. Go, go look at his history. <laughs> the fat. Can't <laughs> <laughs> even say a man's name. <laughs> uh, I know they got a stand. And, Shout out uh, to the Van Gundys. <laughs> bro, I'm saying <laughs> both the Van one. Gundys know how to coach, but one. Just get a damn Van Gundy in the house. Just one of the Van. One Gundys. of the Van Gundys. He's he's been eating. <laughs> this, this, I feel like one. I feel like they had three Van Gundys, and like one of the Van Gundys ate the third Van Gundy, and now they're down to two Van Gundys. How but did this even stuck? I'm saying both the Van Gundys can coach. Go get either one of them. Go get both of them. Put one as an assistant. I don't care. So but think, just get Gentry out of here. That's just my opinion. Do you think he lasts the whole year? Yeah, though? he's here for the whole year at least. Uh, I met him. If they're in tank mode, I'd say keep him because they're he knows not- how to lose games. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, that's for sure. Go look at Gentry's. Go look at his history. This dude There's knows how to lose games. Career. Yes, he, he knows how to make it look convincing too. Bro, yeah, he, he knows how to almost win a game. He knows how to make it look good it's all the way into the last. It's five an minutes. art. It's an art. Yeah, dude's an expert tanker. <laughs> He's either an expert tanker or he is a just an awful coach. He might be in the betting line. That's what it is. He's, yeah, he's got the bed. Uh, yeah, like I that think he's betting on these games. He's gotta be. Pete Rose yeah. in here. Did you see how you seen how fishy that line in Toronto was that first game? The line was seven, and I think we, we saw went that. into overtime and they still they still covered they still Toronto. Covered. They still that's covered. crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Vegas. But e- even though we're struggling, like, it's still fun to watch. It's fun to watch because we have so many young players. It's fun to watch them grow because you see the potential. When Jackson Hayes is out there. Yep, Nikhil. 
What is the ceiling on Jackson Hayes? My God. I mean, he needs to put some pounds on, but when he he's puts athletic. some weight on, watch out, because this he's dude athletic. can be one of the best centers in the game. Right. You see some of the alleys he has. Wow. I think he's got to work on his defensive side of the ball. But that's gonna come with weight because he, he's with, just getting bullied. He can't get pushed out of the way. He's right? just getting bullied. Yeah. And and that's gonna help his rebounding too. He'll be able to box out better. I even said that when we drafted him, his 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 weakness was rebounding. And that's just because he's so slim. Right. But and I'm glad to see he's getting his minutes early yeah, in that, the season. Yeah, yeah. He definitely has to get out there because he's a spark plug. As soon as he goes out there, it seems like the energy picks up. Yeah. And Nikhil Alexander Walker, look, he looked great in summer league. He looked great in preseason. The only difference is it he's playing the same. His shots just not falling. He was so hot, and now he's super cold. The law of averages, he's gonna go somewhere <laughs> in the middle. Is that law of average again? Yeah. So like he was shooting like eighty percent. It's a real thing, by the way. He was shooting like eighty percent in, in summer league and preseason. Now he's shooting like twenty percent. So I feel like he's gonna find somewhere in the middle at forty, just like JJ. He's gonna he's he's a career forty percent three point shooter. Yeah. He's gonna want to get that's so gonna that's that. that's gonna even out. <clears throat> JJ is a lethal shooter. He's a top ten shooter of all time. Let's, so I expect that to pick up. Yeah, for I sure. Agree. Let's let's talk about my man Frank Jackson. Oh man, bro, well, he looks like a starter to me. Yes, but do you package him and more together? Hell Trade no, him? hell no. If I package anybody, I'm packaging Lonzo. I, bro, I don't know. Lonzo, like his shot, it it looks better, but it looks weird. It looks weird. He shoots it too much. He doesn't drive enough. But his, I, I his, love his passing. His vision, his vision and his passing. I love his vision. Just natural. But sometimes, like his passing is so good that he's trying to fit it into these small windows, and it almost it hurts us sometimes. Like the Frank Jackson, he he could. I think he could run the point for us. Dude, he's he's looked pretty pretty. Bro, the good. only reason we got him late in that first round is because he was injured and teams knew that he was going to have to sit out the whole year. So we got then probably a top 10 talent at the end of the first round. We had to wait we had to wait on him, but now we got him. Starting to pay off. And it's paying off. That that's probably Dell Dempsey's only good draft pick. Like the ever. whole time he was at yeah, besides ever. his obvious one. Right. I mean, who who wasn't going to draft Anthony Davis? Yeah. That was obvious. Cool. Even, no. Hey, y'all do realize, <laughs> no. y'all do realize if Portland wouldn't have taken Damian Lillard and they would have taken somebody else. We probably would have taken Damian Lillard. Yeah. And Anthony Davis probably never and would have left. And had the two players in the running for rookie of the year on the same team on the same year. Bro, so we, we might have. We might have. We probably would have been to the Western Conference Finals that a couple been, of times. Wait, we could have. We, we almost had McCollum, too, huh? Yeah, we almost got McCollum, too. Yeah. Just like. Um, we actually passed on him. <clears throat> like he said. They 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 took Lillard, they took Lillard. too took soon, Rivers. and then we took Rivers, and then McCollum got picked like a few picks after. I thought McCollum was one before. No, he's one after. No, he got picked a couple at, like so a we few took after. Austin Rivers was before McCollum over McCollum. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, that is terrible. Shout out Dale Dimps. Dale Dimps. <laughs> but I, I see a lot of McCollum in Nikhil. Just be patient. We got to be patient on these rookies, like. I think we got to be patient on the whole team. Dude. Bro, I mean, Pel- the whole team Pelicans, gonna... when's the last time we've had young players like this, rookies, besides like Anthony Davis, when's the last time we had rookies on this team? Right. We, For the most part, we've been having veterans out there. We had Ryan Anderson. You got Anthony Davis. You got Drew. Eric Gordon. You got Gordon. You got most of, we've been mostly playing with veterans, so we haven't had to go through Growing pains. Yeah, we've been trading picks for players for veteran for yeah, starting players. Yeah, that's what Dell Dems did. Players. So, well, he did take um, Buddy, who got his money. Buddy but, healed. Yeah, and that was a dumb trade. They should have kept him. Yeah, well, we see how that worked out for us. Yeah, we see how that worked out for Mr. Well, Cousins. We went get Cousins, another veteran. Yeah, that's what Dell Dems was famous for. He traded the young guys for vets. Yeah, but I think it was all about AD. You know, he, trying to keep him happy. I think and keep Dimps, him. Dimps was just trying to keep his head above water at that point. Yeah. He was just like, I got to do something, keep the boat afloat. Yeah. But I mean, these are young guys. Zion is 19, Lonzo's 22, Ingram's 22. 
you got you got to think the AD trade was a win, even if his, even if all we got back was Brandon Ingram, I'd yep, say that's a win. I agree because AD wanted out. We get we got back Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram's putting up AD stats, and he's way younger. Imagine where Brandon Ingram's gonna be when he's AD's age. Yeah, there's no doubt. He's he's got a lot of room to grow, and he's looking like an all star already. He really is. He's looking like he can carry a team. Yeah. He he's looking like he could be the best player on a team. And he he looks like he's kind of like put the pressure on me. I got you. He wants to carry. Well, a team. I think I think there is sometimes where he's a little bit too like a little over aggressive. I think we need that though. Yeah, because yeah. you need somebody to be that dominant personality on this team because there's not much yeah. of it. I, I mean, you want him to get it. You want him to get it with the Florida offense, but also there's times where he's such a good scorer. You like man, get it to Ingram and get out the way. Because he's a mismatch for almost any defender. Right. right. You put a power forward, forward on him, he's taking you to the hole. He's too long. You if if you put a smaller small forward on him, he's backing you down and he's shooting over you. Yeah. He don't even see you in his line of vision. He's been he's the, that length. He's been the only constant this year. While other other guys hot and cold every night. Hey, he's twenty five. Ingram every game. Ingram's every game. He's, he's a silent his, assassin. Every game. An assassin, bro. His facial his facial expression don't even change. <laughs> He he could hit threes in your face, dunk all over you, and he looks exactly the same as if he just got blocked or he just turned it over or missed a shot. He looks the same. It's like he just smoked a blunt before the game <laughs> and he's just chilling. He does. Gentry looks like that too. His eyes are bloodshot red every game. <laughs> well, yeah. we got a little touch on Saints, LSU, and Pelicans. I think that's going to wrap us up for, for this episode of uh, the Crescent City Connection podcast. Keep the faith, though. Pelicans fans, keep the faith. Let's Let's watch these young guys grow. Zion's gonna come back. It's gonna be okay. And I think I think when Zion comes back, it's gonna put this. It's gonna get the rotation back to where it needs to be. It's gonna cover up a lot of our flaws. And don't be surprised if we go on a couple of huge winning streaks when Zion comes back, because our strength of schedule also eases up for us too. So if our young guys can can just keep us afloat in these games, and Drew can you know start playing like the Drew we know. And Gentry can get a hold of this lineup and get his rotations figured out. And we can get a few wins, stay above water. When Zion Williamson comes back, I still think it's possible that we can get into the playoffs. And I think this team needs to get some playoff experience. So don't give up just yet, Pelicans fans and LSU fans. Let's go beat Bama and Saints fans. Y'all already know. Falcons going down. So Crescent City Connection Podcast. Go give like, us a listen, go give like us a us share, like, comment, Tell your subscribe, friends. subscribe to the channel. We're going to be with y'all every week. We're going to come at y'all with a new episode. So so subscribe and y'all get the uh, video on your YouTube channel. All right. Peace. That's, that's going to wrap it up. Who that? Go, go Tigers. Go Tigers. Take flight. Go Tigers. Peace out.